Today, we are excited to bring you another Simply Jesus podcast, and we're going to be talking about resting in Jesus. So I invited Marley again to come help me. Thanks, I'm Marley. Back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Um, so what we want to talk about is why do we rest in Jesus? How do we rest in Jesus? And, you know, Marley and I believe that Jesus offers something that we can't always get in other places. And I think even recently, well, especially for me, I've had a rough week and I just felt, you know how you're always trying to keep yourself busy, but you don't know why. And I, I found myself not being able to relax. And yet I had, a, I felt like I had so much to do. So I, um, as I was doing that, I kept thinking, Cheryl, why don't you just sit down and rest? But I almost felt like something was keeping me from it. Yeah. So I tried, I kind of just had to force myself. And I sat down like in my little chair where I had my quiet time. And I was like, Lord, like what is happening? Mm. And I realized there was something that just I had not processed. Mm. And it kind of had just made me all, I wouldn't say anxious, but you know, it yep. makes you just, I felt this chaos in my spirit. Yeah. So I finally just rested in the Lord and you know, he didn't say anything like super magical or whatever. <laughs> I really felt like he was just saying, just come sit with me and just let me comfort you. And so it was just a really beautiful time. And as I did that and I just rested and I just thought, okay, I'm okay. I'm not alone. And I felt so much better. And then I was able to go about my day, but I didn't have this hurry in my spirit. Does yeah, that make sense? It does. Well, also just like for the listener, listen, like today we experienced yes. this. And as I was driving here, you know, you feel that tension in your body. It's not anxious feelings. It's just like hurrying from one thing to the next. And I was thinking of all of the ways that I hadn't um, sat down to think about the right thing for this, you know, and I just was chaotic in my mind. And so I walk in door and Cheryl's like how are you and I just feel like a mess and that's okay right like we can feel like that but um Cheryl practices what she preaches and she was like let's go sit down let's just listen to some music and as soon as I sat down and had like a quiet space with the Lord things came to me oh, awesome. and I just think like that's what he wants for us he he just wants you to sit with him and be still and you have permission to do that but just for the people listening like we are not experts <laughs> Um, and we need to practice this too today, like moments before this and how big of a difference do I already feel sitting here right. after we have just sat with Jesus and like, that is the rest that I want in my life. And honestly, the rest that I resist right. when I think of my day to day life. Yeah. And I'm not sure why, um, I think part of it, I feel like I do is sometimes I don't want to surrender maybe how I'm feeling. Yeah. And I don't, um, but once I do, once I just sit, even if I'm sitting with some worship music or in a peaceful place that's quiet, and I'm intentionally trying to connect with Jesus, yes, um, which is kind of different than maybe like a, a regular meditation, mm -hmm. but I'm connecting with Jesus, who is my peace, and I'm sitting with him, and I feel like I um, there's just so much more that he can mm -hmm. offer us than the world, the way the world says. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, it does. Well, as you were just think, saying that, it made me think, like, um, I think of people in my life or times in my life when I've been grieving or going through um, a hard yeah. time. If, if I sit down, then I have to address that feeling, mm -hmm. and it hurts, and it's scary, but if you are choosing to spend that time with Jesus, like, he is the comforter. Right. He wants to meet you in that. So even when you're feeling really sad or angry or scary, when you sit down with those feelings, he's going to meet them immediately if you oh, would just yes. slow down and allow him to. But what happens is we don't. So we're like running, 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 avoiding the feelings, shoving them down. And that makes it worse. Right. Because they're going to come out at some point and like, I want them to come out in a peaceful moment with Jesus right. rather than on a person that I'm having lunch with and come out in the wrong way. And so I just think we want to avoid it because mm -hmm. it's hard and right. it hurts, but rest actually refills you and sometimes opens the wound. It hurts for a second, but then it heals quicker because you've allowed yes. Jesus to meet you in that moment. Right. Um, and I just think of so many times in my life I've run from the rest because I don't want to address how I'm feeling. Yes. Um, and there's so much attached to that, but Jesus is not mad about my feelings and he's not mad that I am sad or angry. In fact, he's like, no, like that's why I want you to rest so you can tell me. And I just think that, um, I don't know. He just wants to meet us with that 
feeling and that rest and that comfort. Right. It made me think of the scripture in, um, uh, let me find it again. So in Luke 22 is when Jesus goes to the garden of Gethsemane and it's, and I kind of was reminded that even Jesus, right? The son of God who has everything (laughs) seemingly he needs needed to be strengthened So um, in Luke 22, it says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Let not my will, but yours be done. And then in 43, it says, There appeared to him an angel from heaven, giving him strength. And then he kept on praying. And it says, And in great anguish, he prayed more intensely. So the Lord knew exactly what he needed. And he knew that he couldn't take it away from Jesus of what he had to do, but he didn't leave him alone in it. So here comes an angel even to yeah. strengthen Jesus. So I think that makes me think of two things. One, if if Jesus needs an angel to, for strength, then <laughs> yeah. I also need yeah. the Lord to strengthen me. But that also means that Jesus understands yeah. that we need strength. So again, like you said, when you go to him, he's not... He's not um, questioning us because it took us so long to sit down with him. He's just saying, Cheryl, I know I've been there Mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, or I'm sorry that happened to you, or I'm just here as you cry, Mm -hmm. or I'm just here to comfort you. And I just don't want you to be alone in this moment. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe we always feel like we have to kind of grin and bear it. And we don't have to be alone in those moments when we believe in Jesus and he lives inside of us. Yeah, he needs that. Also, something you just said really like struck a chord with me. Jesus needed rest. (laughs) So why would we not? Right. And I think the culture today tells us don't rest. Do more. Get more jobs. Find more people to hang out with. Do all of these things. And so we're busy, 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 busy. And God has not called us to busyness. He has called us to rest. And that's different than just like not doing anything at all, right? Like we're not, he's not like stay home all day and sit on your couch, which sometimes I wish he was telling me, but he's also not asking me to run from the one thing to the next and never think about him throughout the day. Um, And he models that for us. Mm -hmm. Jesus needed rest. So many times in the Bible, we see him taking time away from the crowd and from the group to pray and spend time with the Lord and be renewed and refreshed. And if Jesus, (laughs) like the King of Kings needs that, then we do. Right. Um, and we should take advantage of that and like just know that you have full permission to rest um, because Jesus modeled that for us. And if we're going to live and be more like him, then that requires us to rest. Right. And that's really hard, but really important. Yeah. And if you think about it, he would minister all day and he knew enough about his human condition that he would have to go off and get back and get recentered with the Lord and get filled back up. Otherwise, he would have nothing to give for the very next day because yeah. what he was doing was very demanding, mm-hmm. you know. And it's for any of us that minister to others, mm-hmm. right? We are not called to minister till we're exhausted, yeah. you know, because our our priority is a relationship with the Lord. And then also out of that relationship, we will have what we need to minister to yes. others. But if we just keep giving, I think we're going to find that we're going to end up getting resentful and we get bitter because somebody else needs something else from us. And it really changes your mindset when you're empty yeah. and you're trying to give from that. Oh my gosh, yeah, you can't give anything. It makes me think of a quote from Rebecca Lyons just talking about, um, we don't run so that we can rest, which I think is our culture, right? Let's do all the things so I earn my rest. Right. But really you're resting so that it fuels all the things that God has put before you to do because he has put a lot in front of us. Um, but if you're not rested, you can't do it to the best of your ability. And I want to, I want to do the best that I can. And that requires me to take a step back and rest and know that I don't have to earn it. (laughs) Just like your salvation. It's the same thing. They go hand in hand. You don't have to earn it. There's not, um, something special that you have to do for Jesus to be like, you get more rest today. Um, he's just saying rest so that you can do everything that I put in front of you. And when you step into that calling rested, you can do it. Exactly. With him. Yeah. So So I wanted to talk about maybe some practical ways Mm -hmm. that we can try to just pull away and Mm -hmm. rest. And um, I was kind of, as I was praying about this, I was reminded that Jesus is Mm -hmm. our peace. And sometimes I do, and I actually had to do this. So it's been a busy (laughs) week and I, you know, I had a time where I had to pull away and rest and process my feelings. But yesterday, again, I was feeling this kind of anxiety And and then I was, of course, studying for this, which God is so good like that. But I had to say, okay, Jesus is my peace. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I literally said that over me, that I release peace over myself. I declare that Jesus mm. is my peace. And I tried to walk into the peace that he offers. And the verse that I feel like the Lord gave me or the story was when Jesus rebukes the wind and the waves mm. And, you know, they were so massive that the apostles thought they were going to die, you know, and Jesus is literally sleeping, right? Because he just lives from a different place of rest. But um, the Bible says that he awoke, he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. So what I, I think I didn't realize that he really did two things. Like he stopped the storm but then he also released a calmness over the sea and over the apostles and over the situation. So I think we can go to the Lord and he can kind of, you know how like if you uh, leave a really busy, I don't know, it could be a concert or a, a, um, a restaurant and there's so much chaos. So you walk out of the room and the chaos is in, gone, but you're still like, yeah. ah, amped up, right? Yeah. So Jesus can do that for you. You can step away and he can release peace on you. And there's so many verses in the Bible about Jesus's peace. So John 14 says, this is what Jesus is saying. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid, mm -hmm. which is just like so beautiful. And in John 16, he says, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So I think these are also key verses um, to kind of have in your back pocket mm -hmm. when you feel like, I know I need to be walking in peace, but I can't, I'm having a hard time getting there. Yeah. Scripture has so much power and you can just speak these scriptures over yourself and find that peace of Jesus. Yeah. Well, also the speaking it out loud. I think so many times in our head, we're saying all the things and that's really important, but there's something to saying it again, Jesus modeled that he didn't in his head just didn't say, okay, waves be still. He's like saying it out loud. And so the people around him are hearing that and building their faith and seeing it happen. And I think for us, speaking it out loud does something. Um, I know for me in the past, I've just really struggled with anxiety at night. And so my husband and I memorized a verse that we like say out loud and wow, it's Psalm awesome. 4, 8, okay. um, in peace, I will lie, lie down and sleep for you alone. O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Oh. And there's something to saying it out loud. Cause again, I can say that in my head mm -hmm. on loop. Um, but if I say it out loud, it's almost like it really does speak to anything that, yeah. um, is trying to cause chaos in me. And so I just, again, Jesus models that. And so if we're going to live more like him, like there is something to the audible voice speaking scripture out loud or those promises. Okay. Jesus, like I receive your peace today. I need your peace today. Um, and sometimes you feel crazy yeah. <laughs> saying it out loud, but there, there is a difference when we speak those things out. Um, and I really do think like Jesus calms the waves. He's doing that for us when we speak his truth over ourselves. Yeah. There's so much power in our words and you know, scripture is breathed from the Lord. So there's extra power in scripture to say those things out loud. And I think even yesterday I had, you know, I had written some of this stuff down and I was thinking it, but it wasn't until I just like said, okay, I received the peace of Jesus that I finally really felt that peace kind mm -hmm. of, you know, come over me and not this weirdness I was experiencing. It just makes a difference. And it's amazing. Um, a practical thing that I had thought about that goes along with this, cause you have to take time away to rest, but it's just asking the Lord how he wants you to rest, almost taking an inventory of your life, um, thinking through, okay, are there any things in my life that I am taking on the burden of that are not mine to carry, which we're doing. There's so many of those things. And Jesus is like, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I want to take those on. Um, it is not yours to carry. And I think if you release those to him, if you surrender those to the Lord, you will experience a deep rest that you have never experienced before. Um, but also if you do that and you're like, okay, I don't have anything that I'm taking on. Well then asking how, 
or what am I saying yes to mm-hmm. um, that God has not asked me to? Yeah. And I think if we ask that question, a lot will come up for me, like the scrolling on the phone. I'm choosing to say yes to that rather than choosing to rest. And that's exhausting. Right. Um, we don't think it is, right? It's, mm-hmm. We're like, oh, it's just five minutes on the phone and then three hours pass and you've done nothing of your day and it's exhausting and you're comparing yourself. And so I just think Jesus wants to reveal to us the ways that we are saying yes to things that he has not asked us to say yes to. Um, And through that, he wants to provide rest. When you say no to those things, like putting your phone away even for an hour, I mean, immediate peace. Right. Um, It's actually crazy. And so I just think taking an inventory of our lives um, will reveal things that Jesus is trying to show us. Also, I think a big question that I do not ask enough is how are you already creating opportunities for me to rest? Asking God that. What are you already doing in my life trying to show me places and pockets to rest that I'm not seeing? Um, And there are ways <laughs> that he wants to show you that you may have never thought about wow. um, in your life. I just think so many people are always so tired and they're not resting. And I think Jesus has a better way and right. he is creative and he knows how you're wired. And so he wants to provide opportunities for you and is probably already doing it that you're not looking for. Right. And so I think we need to take time away to pray and ask for his peace, but also ask for him to reveal um, the ways that we're resisting mm-hmm. what he's trying to do for us. Yeah, I think too, like probably one of the ways that the Lord is asking me to rest and I'm not. So I I love information. So I read a lot of stuff, but when you, you know, that also doesn't create rest (laughs) and peace with the world as crazy as it is. And I have found that while I'm driving, he's like, why don't you put on some praise music and just Mm. rest, right? I'm still driving, but I'm not, you know, in traffic, but I am just, that's a good time to rest. And what I tend to do is find another podcast and another thing to listen to, which is not bad, but I think God's saying, look, if you're looking to have a little more peace in your life, then here's a way to do that. Why don't you unplug from the noise and put on something that's Mm -hmm. relaxing and just sit in it while you're driving and, you know, doing the things that need to be done. That is so good and convicting. That was me today driving here. I was just listening to another podcast and... I guarantee if I would have had worship music on, he would have been feeding me like ways to rest and just meeting right. me in that time. And podcasts are great, obviously, yes. for recording one. But I do think sometimes disconnecting from all of the information and the words, um, he meets you in a different way. And we're in the car a lot of the day. And right. so what would it look like to rest in those times? Yeah. That's really good That's and good. a good word for me. <laughs> I was also thinking that you mentioned about, is there a burden Mm -hmm. I'm holding? I had also heard another woman say that if you go to pray and you're getting really distracted, like you're just having a really hard time staying on task when you're praying, that it's possible that there's a burden that's creating all of this inside of you. And that had started happening to me. So I kind of had to take an inventory Mm -hmm. and I asked God, is there, you know, what am I worrying about that's not at all Mm -hmm. from you? And immediately I knew what it was. And because it weighed so heavy on my heart and was causing so much of a distraction, I had to kind of like imagine myself laying it at his feet and and just reminding myself, you're going to take care of this. I don't have to worry about this. You have asked me not to hold on to this burden because there really was nothing I could do about it. Yeah. You know, it, it was bothersome, but there was zero I could do about it. And so I, I just remember kind of handing it to him and the peace that I, I received. And then also when I went to pray, it was easier. I wasn't just my mind all over the place. And I wasn't thinking about that thing. But it did create some kind of chaos within me because of this burden was so heavy. Yeah, Yeah, well, and you saying that, like you um, know the truth and you know that Jesus does that. But I'm just thinking of people listening, like you may not believe that or you may not know that. But like, I just think if we could say anything today, it's like God cares about the situation you're worried about way more than you do. And you can rest and trust that he's got it. Um, And you can you can rest in him. It is safe. It's a safe place. I just think sometimes we don't hear that enough, Mm -hmm. um, but he cares so much more about your family. He cares so much more about your job. He cares so much more about you and your own personal life than you even do. And if that is true, which it is, then we can rest in that and it's safe. And I just think like if you're listening and you're worried or anxious about something and it's causing you to not sleep at night or um, not be restful during the day, like just give it to him because he wants you to and it's safe. Um, and you can trust him and he has got it. (laughs) 
he has got it covered and the outcome may look very different than you thought, but that doesn't mean that it's wrong or bad. Um, he's just asking you to give it to him. And I think when we do that, there is a release. And I think that you will be given rest that you haven't had before. Yeah. And I just, sometimes we know that truth, but hearing it, um, makes a difference. Yeah. And you have to practice that trust because you'll find you will give him something and you'll feel that release and that rest. And then you'll realize the next time, Oh, I know how this works. Right. So it takes yeah. practice. It's, it's a relationship <laughs> and it just takes some time to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm thinking too of the chaos in the world, as far as all the wars and the things going on. I mean, that's very burdensome. You can't yeah. just pretend like they're <laughs> not going on. Yeah. Right. But I do think that Obviously, worry doesn't won't help at all. Mm-hmm. We obviously can pray about it, but we can just go to the Lord with that burden and say, I'm, I just can't do this today. I'm going to give it all to you. And maybe he says, why don't you just pray this little part? Or maybe he gives you a little, you know, because you, mm-hmm. you want to be active and not just pretend yeah, that happening. prayer doesn't matter. Yeah, but um, he may give you something to pray about or a way to process it, but ultimately... I don't think he wants us as individuals mm-hmm. feeling the weight of all of that because it'll be debilitating. Yeah. Um, and I think he has better things for us and a better way to handle that. That's really good. Yeah. I just want you to rest. <laughs> I want to rest. Um, and I don't well, right. Yeah. I don't, um, feel almost like I have a right to. And so again, like I just, if we could say anything more, it's that, You have been given permission to rest because Jesus has modeled that for us and he has created rest for you. Um, And you don't have to be caught up in what the world says about rest, which is almost like don't work more, do more. Um, Jesus says, just come sit with me right? and I want to give you rest. Um, And that's true. And it's good and it's worth it. Um, And so I just hope that anybody listening in for us as we go away today, that we would experience a really true rest from the Lord, um, that it would be different, that we wouldn't just sleep or take a nap, but that we would be rejuvenated spiritually and emotionally and physically um, through Jesus and what he's doing for us. Yeah. So we just bless peace over you, the peace of Jesus, peace over your mind. Um, We just ask Jesus to give you rest and to show you maybe a new way to rest and that you lay all of your burdens at his feet and that you just discover a new way to interact with Jesus. Thank you. Mm -hmm.